All right. So I would suggest, I mean, before you do finite element analysis, I would always suggest to try to have a look into the problem and try to expect something from the behavior of this problem. So I would first to try to identify certain patterns in this problem. And then based on these patterns, I once I get the finite element results, I would check if the finite element results would make sense or not. It's not the other way around. I mean, once you get the finite element results, you can easily justify them. But it is important that you try to actually expect something and then check the reality and see if your expectations would meet the reality. If it doesn't, then you probably need to justify something, either your expectations or the, or the reality. Okay, so let us think in terms of this example. We are going to try and implement this on, on this example. We have, we have a plain strain case. This is this is a pipe running through some some material. Now the pipe is now the pipe diameter is seven millimeters, and there is some pressure. So there will be internal pressure within this pipe. The internal pressure is p, and p is one megapascal. The material now this thickness in there, or this dimension for the thickness of the material considered is ten millimeters. The material properties for this material for, for this material we have the Poisson ratio is 0 0.5, 0 0.3, and the elasticity modulus is 10 to the power 7 megapascal. Now the thickness we are considering is just one millimeter. So the thickness in this direction is one millimeter. Now we want to do a finite element analysis for this, but before we do the finite element analysis, we want to try and estimate, look into what sort of expectations we have from this problem, what sort of deformations do we expect, what sort of stresses do we expect. Now, I want you to look into this problem and tell me what do you expect in this problem? Any suggestions or any observations you can make about this problem? Yes, this is this is two points that are quite important to observe. I mean, first, first thing, this is a symmetric problem. You see that this half is symmetric to this half, and then so this half is also symmetric. So around this one, you have symmetry, and around this axis here, you have symmetry. So the symmetry is important because then you expect things to be similar. If the deformations happen in not symmetric way, you know that this is something wrong in, in, in there. So you can use the symmetry to basically check the results, but you can also use the symmetry to solve one quarter of this problem. So you can only solve one quarter. So you take this part and solve only this part. You don't need to solve all four parts because they are going to be very similar. So this is, with regard to the symmetry. There's a slender part, so this part here is a lot thinner than this part here. This is an important observation. Now, based on this observation that the, the thickness here is smaller than the thickness here, can you expect something? That these parts, since they are thinner, they will move outside more. I mean, if this is going to deform, then this thinner part will deform a bit more. So this is going to be slightly more deformation on the thinner part compared to everywhere else. Now, everywhere else is deforming, certainly. This is expanding everywhere. But in the thinner part, this is expanding a bit more. So there will be slightly more expansion on the thinner part. Now, because of that, so think about this, that is 
happening in this way. I probably, I unfortunately don't have, I'll probably just use the one note. So this is going to deform, and these parts here are going to slightly deform more. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to exaggerate the deformation that is happening at these points here. But as I said, it is going to deform everywhere. All right, so this deformation is going to result into some sort of a bending moment. So because this is going to deform more, the easiest thing for is for this is to rotate as it deforms, but it is not possible for this to rotate because of the symmetry, because this is connected together, and this stopping it from the rotation will result into some bending moment. So this is going to impose some extra tension here and some compression on this point. Now this extra tension, now remember this whole thing is already under tension because of the pressure from the inside. This is entirely under tension, but then these tipping points here are exposed to even extra tension because of this bending moment that happens in there. So it is very likely that these points here will undergo extreme tension to explain the bending moment piece a bit more. This is under compression. So, sorry, this is under tension. Yes, it is under tension. This is pressure from the inside, and this pressure is going to create tension everywhere. This is not a sink. All right? So, you think about a pipe, you have high pressure gas inside the pipe. The pipe is going to be under tension, it's not going to be under compression. Okay? So, if you have a vacuum in there, probably this is going to be under tension. Uh, under compression, but having pressure from the inside is going to result into, com into tension, not compression. Now, this tension, this bending moment effect is going to create some tension on the face at the top here, and it's going to result into some compression on the lower face. The same is true also here. Now, if it happens in this way, this entire section is already under tension. And then having some extra tension at these two points is going to result into extra extreme tension. And it is very likely that the maximum tension would happen in these two points. So this is something to expect from the behavior point of view and regardless of the value of the numbers. Now, the other thing you can do is to check the value of the stress. I mean, the average value for the stress. You can. Think about the, I mean, just in terms of the equilibrium, you can project this pressure here into the vertical direction and the horizontal direction for the value F. And F would be, in this case, just R. Remember, R is this length here, multiplied by the thickness, which is the thickness in this direction here, which is T, multiplied by P. So you have 7 and 7. 7 in newtons and 7 in newtons pointing in this direction and this direction. And from the equilibrium point of view, you will have 7 here and 7 here. If this is 7 and you have the area in there, this is A minus R multiplied by T, you can evaluate the stress, and the stress is going to be 2.3 then. So, I mean, this is 2.3. This is going to be just a rough number for the stress. And once you get the finite element stresses, you can check them against 2.3. If this is very different, I mean, instead of 2.3, you have 205, for example, then you would certainly know that this is something wrong, either in your finite element modeling or your assumptions. So I would double check both things. So the book went on and then did finite element mesh, or did a finite element mesh and finite element analysis, looked into the deformed shape. The deformed shape looked fine. The displacements are symmetric. The average contour plots seems fine, but the unaveraged contour plots, as you can see, are discontinuous here and here. This is discontinuity in the stress, which is something probably wrong. So he did a mesh refinement and considered the problem again. So if you look into the second mesh, this is the results cut from the second mesh. The deformed shape, 
again looks fine. Displacement not quite symmetric in this case. So because the mesh itself is not symmetric, so this could result. I mean, if you look into, for example, the elements here, uh, so the elements here and the elements here, they are exactly symmetric. But whereas if you look into these elements here, you see that this is much larger than this one. So probably the answer un or the, the, the symmetric issue, the symmetry issue are related to the meshing itself rather than the physics of the problem. If you look into the average contour plots, they are fine. If you look into the unaveraged contour plots, you'll see that they are not still discontinuous. They are discontinuous, improved compared to before, but they are still discontinuous. Now, if you look into the value for the stress, you see that the maximum stress is happening at this point here, is 2.9, 2.9, and it is not far away from the 2.3 that has been averaged in here. And if you look into the, I mean, if you look into the point A, you'll see that the tension in point A is much smaller than point B. Right. We are going to do some more examples like this, and then you get your chance to think about this type of problems as well. So I'm going to give you an example. I probably prefer that if you can use a piece of paper and do some sketching on this piece of paper. We have, we have this material. The material is under some boundary conditions. So it is fixed for displacement in the horizontal direction. So this is fixed in the x direction. I'll think about this as rollers. I mean, these circles are actually rollers. And then in this direction, it is fixed in the vertical direction. Again, the rollers with allow movement in the horizontal, but not in the vertical. Horizontal again, and vertical again. Now, on this circular face here, you have displacement fixed in the x and the y. So think about this as pinned. Okay, so this is fixed for displacement in x and y, this entire face of the circle here. Now, the top surface here is free from any constraints, and you have a pressure applied on the top surface. So I want you, first of all, to draw a sketch, just a sketch like this one, for, the, for this object. And I want you then to sketch in this figure indicate how do you think the deformed shape is going to look like. So think about the deformed shape according to these support conditions and to this load, and check how this deformed shape would look like. All right, so I'm going to give you probably two minutes, try to think about the problem and try to sketch it and sketch the deformed shape, and then I'm going to show you the deformed shape and we can discuss it. Can you now tell me any distinct features about the deformed shape? Both of them are going down, but as you said, it is going down leftward a bit more than the right side. So on the left side, it deforms a bit more because you have softer tissue here. So this is a lot larger chunk of soft tissue compared to this side. This side is less soft tissue, so you'd be expecting less deformations happening on this side. So if you look into the actual displacement, you'll see that displacements are slightly larger here than in here. And it just moved toward the inner part of this or the center of this area. Now, how about the stresses? Uh, 
I want you again to sketch sigma x and sigma y. So this is x and this is y. I want you to sketch the stresses that you think. Jadeep now is, we are talking about the stress. So I want you to look into the stress. Try to look if there will be any singularities and look into compression tension, where to expect smaller, larger values for the compression tension. Think in terms of these quantity. So mention that you might see singularities on these corners. See, this is, this is yes, this is the case. You might expect some singularities happening in here and here. Here, you have change in the boundary conditions. So the boundary conditions are supporting in two different directions. And these corners might be tricky ones. Depends really on on what. Yeah, it depends really on what sort of load case you have. I mean, you may have, for example, if you have a re-entrant corner like this, and then you don't have any loads that is going to affect this corner, then in this case you you still you, know, you potentially still can have a stress singularity. But it is not going to be a stress singularity because this is not stressed at all. I mean, if you don't load this in a way that this is going to stress the corner, then there will be no stress singularity, not because the potential is not there. The potential is in there, but it is just that the loading scenario you have applied didn't result into a singularity. So be careful on thinking about that as well. So I would be careful about all re-entrant corners anyway. But once I get into the results, it may result in, into a singularity or it may not result based on what sort of boundary conditions you have and what sort of loads you have. In the reality, both of them, both of them are going down, and this is entirely under compression. So if you look into the tension compression picture, you will see that it is zero tension and entirely under compression. Now, what you said is is correct in a sense that you have minimum amount of compression at this end. And as you are approaching this corner, you have zero stress, closer to zero stress, whereas you have the maximum stress happening on this end. Now, this is in the x direction because this is trying to expand and being stopped from expansion because of the Poisson ratio. Whereas if you look into the, where, whereas if you look into the, Y direction. So this is the direction that the, this is the direction where the major action is happening, compression everywhere. And as was thinking, there will be some impact happening at the corners. All right. So the curved face. Now I want you to just first of all to see that this is compression everywhere in the X and the Y because there is no escape for this material. This material is stuck in there. You are only pressing this material from the top and it can't escape anywhere. So it is going to be completely compression. It's not going to be any tension in there. I mean, if there will be some area for the material to escape from, this would probably create some tension. But at the moment, it's completely compression because it is locked from every single direction, and the only free surface is under pressure. So this is resulting into compression everywhere. You see that? Minimum compression compared to maximum compression in here, in the x direction. Whereas in this case, you see that this is uniform, pretty much uniform compression have, happening everywhere. The next case is exactly the same like before. However, now I have removed any restraints from this face here. So this face here is completely free from restraints. There's no boundary conditions applied in there. Now, everything else stays the same except for this surface here. Now, first thing I want you to do, I want you to draw the deformed shape, just a picture of the deformed shape. Again, try to sketch it in two minutes and see what, what you get. I mean, first of all, this edge is moving down, just like happened before. However, now, because 
I'll probably just show you the picture. However, now, because this is also soft, I mean, think about this edge. I mean, from this point to this point here, you have more bulk into the material, so more likely to deform. Whereas on this part, you have less space for this material to deform. So it's going to deform less. So you have less here, more here. And on top of this circle here, you have still more deformations because it is soft at the bottom and it's possible to move outside. Now, the other thing is this material is actually moving outside. If you look into this part here, this is completely now, now the material is trying to escape. It's trying to escape within to escape from this confinement, and this escape will happen on this curved surface. Now I want you, after you have this picture for the displacement, I want you to do the same thing for the stress and the and the x and the y directions. All right. So just try to sketch the stresses in the x and the y direction based on how you see the deformations. Well, I agree, it's going to be quite dominant by compression, but there will be also something else. Exactly, yes. so it is going to be dominated by compression because compression is still the main effect in here and very small area for this to escape from. However, because you have some areas for this material to escape from, you are going to create some rotation. See, this material has rotated as it is moving outside, Probably just use the pen in there. See, this surface here is not exactly parallel to this surface. So this actually has rotated as it is moving to the outside. This rotation will create some moments in there, some bending moments, and these bending moments will result into tension and compression. So it's going to be a combination of both. Now also, these singularities will become more important than before. So you see the singularity will start to show in full. And you will start to have tension and compression. So if you look into tension, you'll have positive values for the stress and positive values for the stress compared to the negative ones. The negative ones are still dominant. So the dominant stress is 1.1, 10 to the power 4. This is in compression whereas we're talking 10 to the power 2, and in this case, 10 to the power 3. So the bending moment is creating some tension, but the tension is still insignificant. The major impact is happening due to the, com to the compression we have in there. Again, <clears throat> because this is trying to escape, the material is going to try and escape from this. This is going to create this rotation that is going to create the tension itself. So you see that the tension is happening around this part here. So this is the major part where you have the tension. Again, the singularity will distort your view, so you don't need to be really concentrating on the point where you have the singularity, but away from the singularity, this is still a correct representation because this, this tension is actually happening. All right, I'm going to push this a little bit further. And now I'm going to remove the entire support from this edge here. So there's no support on this edge as well as the circular arc. I'm still applying everything to be the same way. The pressure is coming from the top. So I want you, first of all, to draw a picture and then for the deformations. And then you, I want you to think in terms of the stresses. And this is now correct, yes. Now you have a lot softer part compared to this side. This is a lot more rigid. 
compared to the left. And so the right is a lot softer compared to the left. The left is really rigid compared to the right. Now, this is a free to move, and it actually moves. So you see that the deformations are a lot larger on the right-hand side compared to the left-hand side. And this is actually the case. Now, I want you to think in terms of the stresses, how this is going to result into the stresses changing. If you look into this one, you'll see that as this moves down, as this face here moves down, it will try to rotate. I mean, the easiest thing for it is to rotate as it moves down. Now, this is not possible because this side is fixed, completely fixed. So this would result into this bending moment effect. This is the exact similar effect to the one we have discussed in, the, in this example here. See this effect? This face is trying to rotate, but it is not possible for it to rotate because it is hooked or is, is attached to some, something else. And in this case, we have the face not moving because it is actually supported in this direction and it is not possible for it to, to, to move. So it is staying upright. And because of that, it is not rotating, and this would result into compression and tension in the x direction. So this is rotation happening in the x direction, and then the bending moment will happen in the, in the x direction, and you have compression and tension happening at the corners. This is exactly it, yeah. Now, because you have the object to be free really to move in, in quiet, quite few directions and you have an entire face that is this side here to be a place for the material to escape this is going to create a combination of tension and compression happening inside the object and you will see that the tension will start to become relatively big so if you look into the compression the compression has not changed much we're still taking talking 10 to the power 4 but when you look into uh, sorry the, the compression, but when you look into the, the tension, I uh, it is is increased and is also becoming more dominant. So you see that big parts are affected by the tension compared to what we have before. So you see that this section, this section, and this section are pretty much under tension compared to in the past we had relatively smaller parts under under tension. So it was concentrated really at the singularity, not big. I just look into the red part, you'll see that this a lot more dominant. The red color is more dominant in the picture. All right, now I'm going to push this one more step and I'm going to relieve the entire side. So this is also now free to, so this side is also free to move as well as the remaining part from below. So this entire side is free to move. I want you to sketch the deformations, and then we are going to discuss the displacement. Now, if you look into this one, this is now pretty much like a cantilever. This is exactly like a cantilever. It will behave like a cantilever. So this is going to move downward as expected. This face is free to rotate. So this would relieve a lot of from the tension and compression we talked about in the past. But this whole thing would behave like a cantilever. See, this is tension. This is compression. Just like you have a cantilever that is fixed here and loaded here. So you'll see that this is 
tension, the top surface is tension, and the bottom surface is compression. And the tension and compression grows as we get closer to the support. So this is the support for the top part, and this is the support for the bottom part. Now the tension and compression are becoming equivalent. So if we think about, or if you look into the tension, the tension is five, 10 to the power of three. If you look into the compression, it is six, 10, uh, six multiplied by 10 to the power of three. So they are to an extent balanced together. Okay, and if you look into the stress singularity, the stress singularity at this point will now start to, to appear and become quite, quite dominant.